CataractCoach.com, when the speculum won't open more. This patient has narrow palpebral fissures from prior plastic surgery. Now, this is a unique issue we have in Beverly Hills. Now, look at this. I can't place the fixation ring on the eye very well. It's a challenge here just to get the eye held in place to make up my paracentesis. Now, why can't I crank open the lid of speculum any more than I have right here? Think about it. Now, let's tell you about RetinaRounds.com. Our new channel, RetinaRounds.com, our sister channel, is coming on March 1. Sign up for the free daily email, RetinaRounds.com. Plus, remember, it's going to be here on YouTube as well, at RetinaRounds. Check it out. Now, going back to our case here, what we're looking at is a very narrow palpebral fissure. Now, you can tell by the patient's iris color. This is a patient who's not from an Asian country. This patient is a USA patient, been a USA, born and raised his entire life. But the key catch here is the patient had prior plastic surgery. Now, in the future, when I need a blepharoplasty, and maybe I'll need one in the future, I'm going to go to an oculoplastic specialist, an ophthalmologist who specializes in eyelid surgery because they understand the eyelid anatomy better than anyone else. But a lot of patients here in L.A., especially this patient, they have done plastic surgery of their eyelids with plastic surgeons who are not ophthalmologists and may not have the same grasp or understanding of the eyelid anatomy. As a result, this is the maximum palpebral fissure for this patient. This is putting in the speculum in the eye and cranking it as much as possible. And even then, you cannot see white to white. So what's the total palpebral fissure here? Maybe like eight, nine millimeters. Look at that. You can't see the entire cornea in your view. And that's a common situation for us in Beverly Hills. Because these patients look great until you put the lid speculum and you say, oh my gosh, there is so much resistance to even opening the speculum. Now, you don't want to crank that lid speculum open because what's going to happen? You're going to dehist the levator muscle. You're going to cause some ptosis. It's going to be a hot mess. You don't want to do any of that stuff. So what we got to do is you got to learn to operate through this narrow palpebral fissure. And that's just a thing of my patients here in Beverly Hills. It's a normal thing for me on a weekly basis. I have multiple patients every week where I cannot open the lid speculum enough to see white to white. And that's okay. We learn to deal with it. So here in this case, by the way, it's a complete cataract case. I'm showing you the whole case start to finish unedited. We're going to see you can still complete your surgery here very well. And so what we do here is we're going to chop this cataract up, emulsify it down pretty easily. Luckily, it's a Beverly Hills cataract. By the way, this patient has a purse, a handbag that costs more than my car. And that is not a joke. That's actually reality. And that's just the nature of where we're operating. In fact, I had a patient tell me, not this patient, but another one said, Doctor, of all my service personnel, you and my chef are my favorites. And I was like, wow, that must be one heck of a chef. Anyway, let's go back to our case here, going in and doing the cortex removal. And again, you don't see the whole white to white of the cornea here, superior to inferior. So what we got to do is be very careful here, aspirate out of the cortex, clean this case up, get the lens in the bag, and the patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. But we have to learn to operate through this narrow palpebral fissure. And again, that's something specific to my patients. Now, if you're in a different part of the world, you may have other challenges with your patients. There are other parts of the world where you have more pseudo exfoliation. There are parts of the world where you have more white cataracts. There are parts of the world where you have, again, like me, very narrow, narrow palpebral fissures. Whatever it is, I trust your skills and your surgical judgment, and you'll do a beautiful job. Now, at the end of the case here, putting some uh, cohesive viscoelastic in the eye, fill out the capsule bag, maybe going to do a little capsule polishing or just put the lens in. Let's see. Uh, capsule polishing, a little bit. Now, not a whole lot of lens up the cells to remove, but we'll clean up as much as we can, and we'll get the lens in the bag. How's that Rexus? It looks pretty good to me. I'll give that Rexus a good rating. What do you guys think? How's the Rexus? Eh, it's pretty good. For cataract coach, I give him a pass on this. So let's see. Let's get the lens in the eye. Here comes the lens. Patient's electing for a single piece monofocal lens here. Uh, target refraction is emetropia. This patient started off as a plus three hyperope. So I'm sure making the patient emetropic will make him or her very, very happy. Now get the lens in the bag, position around, haptics open up nicely. That looks pretty darn good. Let's see how do I do on that Rexus. Mm, I like it. I will take it. Now let's take out the viscoelastic, finish up this case, and call this a day. But again, 
narrow palpebral pe- fissures, it'd be very challenging to operate from this superior position. So I'm glad in this case here that I am a temporal surgeon. I sit temporally and make my incision there temporally. It makes life a lot easier. Remember too, the temporal limbus or temporal edge of the cornea is furthest from the visual axis compared to superior or any other position. So there's a reason why temporal is better in that regard because it's furthest from the visual axis. A little bit of hydration to seal the main incision here. We'll go inside in the eye. Let's see, sweep around, let's go inside the eye, seal up the paracetamol and call this a day. So interesting case here, beautifully done. And remember, you may have challenges that I don't, but for me, I got a lot of narrow palpebral fissures from prior plastic surgery. So, hey, check out Pradeep Prasad, my good buddy, doing retinarounds.com. You're going to love it. A new video every day starting March 1. Please go to retinarounds.com and sign up for that free daily email.